The War with Grandpa, read aloud by Mrs. Carter. Chapter 8. Night Fright. I'm a little ashamed of this part of my story, but I have to tell the truth. Not only was I mad as a wet hairnet about losing my great room, I was a little bit scared about sleeping upstairs, too. I brushed my teeth and did my go-to-bed things in the top-floor bathroom. Instead of the beautiful bathroom Jenny and I shared downstairs, I had this dinky, dim bathroom now. It was gross. The mirror was very old and had dark stains on it. The sink was very tiny and kind of yellow instead of being white. And the walls were dark old wood, like some rough cabin in the woods. I went downstairs to my parents' bedroom, kissed Mom goodnight. On the way back upstairs, I peeked into my old room. It looked strange to see different furniture in there. Strange and kind of hurting. It was scary to go upstairs to my room. The staircase leading to the top floor was narrow and rickety. The steps were bare wood that creaked when you stepped on them. And there wasn't too much light. Not like the steps leading to the second floor, which were covered with thick carpet and had a beautiful light fixture so everything was plain as day. The hallway upstairs was spooky. A narrow little space that was very dark. With open doors to empty rooms that looked like black caves somewhere where someone could be hiding. I know that sounds silly, but that's what I was feeling. There was no boogeyman who waits in the dark to grab kids. I know that. But at nine o'clock at night in this dim little hallway with the floorboards creaking, you can get frightened whether you know that or not. I kind of jumped into my new room and slammed the door shut fast and just as fast jumped into bed and under the covers. I waited before I turned off my lamp. I was in no hurry for it to get dark. But finally, it I did it. And that turned out to be scary, too. Like I said before, in my old room, I knew where everything was and how everything was, and there was nothing scary. But up here, it was different. A light flickered on the ceiling and the wall, making shadows that jumped around. And a rustling noise came from outside the window. And something in the hallway made a sound. Was it a footstep outside my door? I may sound very brave just writing these things down so easy. The truth was I was terrified out of my mind. The waving shadows of yellow light on the wall almost began to look like two black arms that could grab me. Be still, my heart, I whispered to myself, which is something my mom says sometimes. I felt like an idiot talking to myself, but I was the only company I had in that room. It's nothing, I said. I crossed my fingers, then I crossed my toes. Go to sleep, I told myself. Just close your eyes and fall asleep and everything will be hunky-dory. Ha! I got into my best sleeping position, which is curled up on my right side with my hands tucked up under my cheek. The rustling sound had to be from the big old tree outside my window, I figured after a while. And the spooky yellow light that was probably the street lamp on the corner and the noises outside my door were just old floorboards creaking. And there really wasn't a crook or a murderer sneaking up here to get me? Probably. And then I began to get angry. Why was I the only one in the house who had to give up something for Grandpa? Why me? And why was I stuck up here in this disgusting place and scary place instead of staying in my great and wonderful old room? I thought about my illustrated book of old sea battles and the picture of John Paul Jones on deck with his big curved sword in the air. I have just begun to fight, he said. It gave me an idea. Maybe there was a way I could fight back to get what was really mine. But how? That's what I was thinking about when I finally fell asleep. Chapter 9 Grandpa Jack now I have to tell you about my Grandpa Jack and what happened when he finally came to our house to live and how he settled in and everything like that. And that's another too long sentence. I used to know my grandparents very well when I was little and they lived close by. I remember they used to come to our house most weekends and they played with me a lot. But then Grandma got this terrible disease. They call it emphysema, but they spell it emphysema. It comes from smoking cigarettes, which if anybody does, they have to be crazy. This emphysema made it very hard for Grandma to breathe. Mom said that on, our, on windy or cold days, Grandma was not allowed to put a foot outside her house, or any part of her either. It was around then that Jenny was born, and Grandma and Grandpa moved to Florida. 
Mom said it was for the warm weather, which was good for Grandma's lungs. I remember being sad when they left. I loved them a lot. I loved how they always wanted to play with me, and almost anything I did was okay with them. Starting then, I saw them only when we would go to their house in Florida at Christmas. The rest of the year, we would talk on the telephone, maybe once a week, and then Grandma died. Now Grandpa was alone, and it was hard to think about. I only knew my grandma and grandpa together. They were never apart when they saw me and the family. They were a pair, like shoes or gloves, but now there was only grandpa. Dad brought grandpa home from the airport. He pulled the car up the driveway and tooted the horn. We all ran outside, and Jenny jumped right on grandpa's neck as soon as he got out of the car, even though mom had just said not to. Dad finally had to take her down. Then grandpa gave me a long hug and held, and held me away to look at me. You're no Peapod anymore, he said, which was a nickname he had called me. Petey, you're springing up like a weed. You must have grown three inches since Christmas. He smiled at me then with, a little, with little lines crinkling around his eyes. I smiled back at him. He looked so different to me from the last time I'd seen him. The lines and wrinkles in his tan face looked deeper. His shoulders stooped down and there was kind of a sad look in his eyes even when he was smiling. And when we finally got into the house, my, with Dad and me helping to carry Grandpa's things, I could never see that Grandpa was limping worse than ever. Grandpa used to be in the construction business until he retired, building houses mostly. Years ago, he got a piece of a big piece of wood fell on him and broke his leg. Mama, Mom and Grandma always said it never healed right. And now Grandpa had something wrong with his leg that Mom called arthritis. It was late when Grandpa arrived and we had all carried his things upstairs and tried to help him get settled into his room. My room, I mean. My old room that was now his. My idea of helpful was to take Grandpa's shirts out of his suitcase and put them into his dresser. Jenny's idea of helpful was to do pirouettes in the middle of the room banging into everybody. Mom finally shooed Jenny and me out of out and made us get ready for bed. I did all my get my go to bed things and got into my pajamas and went downstairs to the kitchen to say goodnight to Mom and Dad. They were sitting at the kitchen table drinking tea. I knew when I walked in that they were saying private things to each other because they shut up quick when I came in and looked at me kind of funny. Mom looked real sad, like she was getting ready to cry. She hugged me a little extra tight, I thought, and ruffled my hair. I said good night. I didn't go back to my room, though. What I did was hang around under the staircase to hear what they were saying. I was right about my mom. She was crying. He looked so awful, she sobbed. Please, Sally, I heard my dad say. He's very tired, you know. It's been a very long day for him. He'll be fine after he gets some rest. There's just no life to him. Life in him, Mom said. No life. It's only a few months since she's died. Dad said. He's very depressed. Give it time, hon. I hope you're right, Mom said. I sneaked up the stairs very quietly so my folks couldn't hear me and went to say goodnight to Grandpa. He was sitting on the edge of the bed, holding something in his hand. I could see it was a photograph of Grandma in a silver frame. Goodnight, Grandpa, I said, but I don't think he heard me. He just kept very still, staring at Grandma's face in the picture. My mom was right, I thought, as I went up to my room. Grandpa had no life at all. Could you die from being sad, I wondered? Could you?